It is so complicated. Actually, it's quite simple. In this video I explain to you what types of secondary schools there are in Germany and why it's okay if your child doesn't go to the gymnasium. I will stick to the word pupil for Schüler as students seems to fit better for Studenten as there are only Studenten at a university and Schüler at the schools. Pupils learn and students study, at least in Germany. So if you want to translate English into German, take care of the difference in German between Lernen and Studieren, what could be translated both with study. As always, school education is the responsibility of the federal states. I try to keep these as general as possible. Children in Germany are required to attend school from the age of six until they reach the age of a majority. After primary school, children have to go to secondary school and after 10th grade they may have to go to vocational school. In this video I have given a brief outline of the types of school and their history and I assume you have already seen the video in primary school, otherwise you are welcome to watch it afterwards. So let's go straight to the secondary school types here. Traditionally there are three types of school which originally differed in their degree, namely Hauptschule, Realschule and Gymnasium. Accordingly there was a Hauptschulabschluss, the Realschulabschluss or Mittlere Reife, often also called Fachoberschulreife and the Abitur. I will also stick to the German names as there is no suitable translation for Hauptschule, Realschule or Sekundarschule and only to translate Gymnasium with Grammar School sounds odd. In most of the federal states there are now mixed school types according to new learning concepts. Although they have different names for the same school form in the federal states, the mixed forms as they are also called in North Rhine-Westphalia, are the Sekundarschule, which combines Hauptschule and Realschule, or the Gesamtschule, which combines Hauptschule, Realschule and Gymnasium. So in Bremen there is only the Oberschule, which I called Sekundarschule before, and the Gymnasium, while in Hamburg there are Stadtteilschulen, which are something like Gesamtschulen and can lead to the Abitur in nine years, or the Gymnasium, which is supposed to lead to the Abitur in eight years. Sorry, that wasn't my idea. So, depending on where in Germany you and your child are supposed to attend school, please see what the types of schools are called there. Only Bavaria, which is otherwise so progressive, continues to have only the three traditional types of school. Now I'll stick to the designations in North Rhine-Westphalia. We learned in the video from the primary school that the children get a recommendation for the school at the end of the third or at the beginning of the fourth grade as to what the primary school teacher would recommend for a further school for the child. The goal of a gymnasium is to go to university and the goal of Hauptschule or Realschule is to do an apprenticeship or perhaps go on to gymnasium or Fachoberschule afterwards. Accordingly, the teacher looks after how well the child has coped with the material and the language so far. Depending on the federal state, this recommendation is more or less binding. At the gymnasium, pupils learn a lot very quickly and are required to do a lot of homework. This is less the case at the other types of secondary school and the goal is also not necessarily as academic. At this point, it should be noted that it's absolutely normal in Germany to do an apprenticeship. The dual system of vocational training in Germany is one of the best in the world. The important thing at the end of school is the degree. If the child did particularly well at the Hauptschule, he or she can also obtain a qualification certificate there. And if he or she did particularly well at the Realschule at the end, the child can also obtain a qualification certificate there for the Gymnasium. 
It would also be possible to graduate from the gymnasium with a Hauptschulabschluss or Realschulabschluss after 10th grade, but that is not the goal. When it comes to the Sekundarschule or Gesamtschule, the children are not separated according to performance, but are taught together. However, the exams can be taken at different levels of difficulty. So, if you are particularly good at math, you can answer the more difficult questions of the Realschule level or the Gymnasium level there. While if you are weak in English, for example, you can answer the easier questions of the Realschule level or Hauptschule level. At the end of 10th year, the child then receives the best possible qualification or, in case of the Gesamtschule, can then continue to learn up to the Abitur if the performance is right. A special feature is a Fachoberschule, where the Fachabitur can be attained. After completing Realschule with a Fachoberschulreife, you can go to a Fachoberschule for two years and then obtain a Fachabitur. Sometimes you can achieve this at a Gesamtschule as well. With a Fachabitur you can study at a Fachhochschule, a University of Applied Science. It is important to note that it is not attendance that means graduation, but depending on performance in the test. There is a grade and the grade determines promotion to the next grade or graduation from school. As mentioned at the beginning, the teenager is obliged to attend school until the age of 18, regardless of graduation. In most cases, outside of the gymnasium, this is then the vocational school during vocational training. Again, to clarify, the important thing for the further path is the school leaving certificate, not necessarily what type of school it was. The gymnasium prepares pupils for university and goes through a lot of academic material very quickly, while the other schools go a little slower with the material and focus more on possible work and training. But we'll get to that later. When the primary school recommendation for the next school is given, it is usually also time to choose a secondary school. Here you are not usually bound to the nearest school. With regard to a ticket, however, the route to the nearest school is often taken into account, so it may be that only the route to the nearest grammar school is subsidized, but not the route to the desired grammar school. There are also boarding schools where the children stay overnight at the school and only come home at weekend or during the holidays. This is used, for example, by people whose parents travel a lot. As a rule, a high additional payment must be made for accommodation in boarding schools. Sometimes, however, this is supported or ordered by the Youth Welfare Office if it would be beneficial for the child's development. This can have both sad reasons if the parents cannot take care of the child properly and positive ones if the grammar school would be the right place for a highly gifted child. As a rule, School attendance does not cost any separate money. Even private schools are often substitute schools, Ergänzungsschulen, that are subsidized by the state for providing teaching capacity, just like public schools. If schools deliberately charge parents a lot money for attendance, they would be exempt from public funding. This is to prevent a child's school attendance from being a matter of parents' money. Private schools are slightly more common in the east of Germany than in the west, but overall they play a minor role. Apart from special school concepts such as Waldorf or Montessori, many private schools are confessional schools. Apart from that, Germans sometimes wonder whether the child has to be bought a degree because he or she cannot keep up in public school. So it's exactly the other way around than in the USA, for example, where private schools are often said to have better quality of teaching than public schools. Even in public schools, there are often focal points in the school. For example, some offer additional musical or artistic emphasis. Some grammar schools focus on ancient languages. Others work together with local companies to train the children more in IT, agriculture or other things. Still others see themselves as promoting sports. During the school search period, secondary schools typically offer open days 
where you can visit the school with your child and see what the school has to offer, whether the child likes the teachers and whether they like the school's concept. Then you register and receive a confirmation back from the school. When registering at the school, you can also express wishes as to whom the child would like to go to class with and with whom not. Whether all wishes can be fulfilled is another question, but usually an attempt is made. As with primary school, you will also receive a list of things to get for school. For exercise books, don't forget the linear tour, which will make it easier for you to get the right exercise books. You will probably need to buy one or two books and you will need to look at the ESPN. Other books are provided by the school. Whether and from when your child should work with a laptop or tablet varies from school to school, as does whether it has to be provided by the school or purchased or rented privately. If you receive state aid, you will typically also receive help with these expenses. Practice getting to school during the holidays, whether on foot, by bike or by bus. You'll probably receive your bus or train ticket on the first day of school, so you may have to pay for the first journey yourself. The school secretary will tell you this too, or the information will come with the letters from school. Yes, there is a letter post here. But all schools also have home pages and also communicate with parents by email or special access areas. In North West Failure, the Pupils also have a ring binder with all the school rules and weekly sheets in which the teacher and parents pass on messages. Sometimes it is called a logbook or a compass. After the end of the summer holidays, the new school starts. There is not given a new school cone here as it was on the first day in elementary school. Typically, there are three main subjects, German, Mathematics and a foreign language, usually English. However, this can vary if the schools in the border region offer French, Danish or Polish as a first foreign language or if there is a bilingual Sorbian German school in Saxony. Primary school subject Sachunterricht is now divided into Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Geography, History and Politics. Not every subject is offered in every school year. There are physical education classes, religion or ethics classes, as well as art and music. Often there is an orientation in the first two years, five and six, in Berlin and Brandenburg primary school already lasts six years, where you can also get a taste of working groups. It is also possible to change school here if the decision was wrong. From grade 7 onwards, there are additional core subjects. These can be, for example, technology or economics, but also another foreign language, often French, or at grammar schools, Latin, but other languages are also possible. In the Hauptschule, there is often only one foreign language, but more practical subjects. In English, you typically start with British English and then learn from the 7th or 8th grade that American English is different. Lorry becomes truck, shop becomes store and color is suddenly written without a U. Whereas before the stories revolved around people from England, now stories from the USA are added. As soon as possible, lessons in foreign languages are held only in the foreign language. In physical education classes, the curriculum alternates between sports and swimming. There are also sometimes sport AG, sport working groups, and occasionally competitions against other schools, but these are rare. I mentioned this in the video about sport in Germany. In geography, you go through the continents, their topography, rivers and mountains, learn the differences between tundra and tiger and the climate zones. In history, you usually start around the ancient Egypts and then move on to the Greeks and Romans and then European Middle Ages. It continues with the voyages of Columbus and the beginning of the colonization, the Napoleonic Wars and the First World War, sometimes up to the founding of the Federal Republic of Germany. 
the period of the Weimar Republic and the further years through the Second World War up to the present day are often also dealt with in politics. Politics also deals with various forms of rule and global politics as well as sometimes the independence of colonies and their subsequent development, often using India as an example, and of course current events, current elections and decisions. All pupils also learn about the crimes of the Nazis in the Third Reich and sometimes even visit a concentration camp or similar exhibitions. In physics and chemistry, experiments are often carried out, such as oxyhydrogen reactions, electrical circuits and the like. In contrast to the classrooms where most of the teaching takes place, there are usually specialist rooms for chemistry and physics. In biology, in keeping with the onset of puberty, the children are taught about physical changes, contraceptive options and sexual transmitted diseases. Depending on the focus of the school, there are sometimes cooking classes, needleworks, handicrafts, economics or even computer courses. As in elementary school, the timetable is different every day and changes at least every school year. Main subjects are given at least four hours a week and the others usually two hours a week. Older pupils have also lessons in the afternoon. As in primary school, a school lesson is typically 45 minutes, but a few schools have also lessons of 60 minutes. If possible, sport is given in a double lesson. During school time, there are likely to be two or three trips of several days, one of which is often abroad. In addition, where possible, local visits of museums, businesses or nature and excursions. The UK has been very popular in the past. I don't know what this looks like currently after the Brexit. Of course, you as parents are also asked to participate in the parents' association in the secondary school. A special feature is that the school council here consists of parents, teachers and also pupils. So representatives of all three decide on various points, e.g whether there is a dress code. There are no school uniforms in Germany and rules are matter of the school. There are often rules, for example, that caps are not to be worn indoors or that kids are not allowed to dress belly free. But this varies from school to school. In addition, your school will probably have a booster club that is looking for members to help with various events. They will be happy to have you join them. While Hauptschule, Sekundarschule and Realschule go up to grade 10, Gymnasium and Gesamtschule go up to grade 12 or 13. Originally it was nine years to the Abitur, but a few years ago they shortened that by one year with the GH. In the meantime many federal states have returned to the G9. In some Gesamtschulen you can also take the Fachabitur. Typically a three-week internship is completed in a company in the ninth school year and sometimes a second internship is done at Hauptschulen or Sekundarschulen. This is intended to give pupils an insight into working life. At the same time, applications are discussed in German lessons so that the pupils can apply for an apprenticeship before they graduate from school and can thus make a seamless transition from school to apprenticeship. In the upper secondary school, the focus is more on finding the right university and applying to the university, but there are also school leavers who start an apprenticeship. There is always a trip at the end of the school. This is the last big get-together in the class. Often the whole grade or year group goes together. At the gymnasium, the pupils are usually already 18 and thus adults, otherwise they are usually 15 or 16 years old. Graduation is usually a more festive affair. Also at the gymnasium it is often celebrated with a ball. In addition, Abiturienten, gymnasium graduates, often take over the school for a day as part of a graduation prank. Regardless of how one graduates from secondary school, one can still catch up 
on any degree later in the context of Abendschule evening school and then also begin any training or study. And since neither school nor university costs much and you typically already earn some money in the context of an apprenticeship, you can usually afford to make another pass. And it wasn't so complicated, was it? If the video was helpful, feel free to recommend it. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.